on this Saturday night, a community united in grief. <laughs> Hundreds gather in an Ottawa suburb remembering the victims of Wednesday's mass killing. So it's really hard to see that this happened. The stories of support and shattered hearts. Gaza's hunger crisis deepens despite increased aid efforts. In recognition of the serious and significant processes that the United Nations has undertaken. The desperation and fears of a full-scale Israeli offensive in Rafa. Hunting for hidden emissions. Lift off Falcon 9. The satellite launch marking a new era in methane accountability. Incredible and Vincible. Thinking that a little Canadian film is gonna, um, you know, change everything is a bit hard to believe. A Canadian short film driven by a director's personal story of loss makes its way to the Oscars. Global National with Farah Nasser. Reporting tonight, Nithu Garcha. Good evening and thanks for joining us. A somber and tearful day in an Ottawa neighborhood where more than 300 people gathered to honor the six victims of a horrific mass killing. Community members mourning the loss of Darshni Aiken Aika and her four children, the youngest just two months old, who were murdered on Wednesday. An adult family friend was also killed. All were from Sri Lanka and were newcomers to Canada. A 19-year-old man who had been living with the family remains in custody, charged in connection with the killings. The lone survivor of the attack, the father of the family, remains in hospital. As David Aiken reports, once he's released, there will be an entire community ready to support him. A solemn moment, a time for reflection and fellowship. At a community park just a block away from the home where the Wickramasinghe family were building their new life in Canada. Ottawa, Sri Lankan community, uh, I know you're hurting and we are hurting with you. Those who knew the mother and her four children shared photos and memories. My daughter played with their kids a lot at the temple where they were all playing together. So it's really hard to see that this happened. The father, Danushka, is recovering from two surgeries he needed because of wounds suffered in the attack that killed his family and a family friend living with them. Arrangements are being made to bring family members to Ottawa from Sri Lanka and to repatriate the family friend's remains. I think next few days they, they can come here. So that's what we are expecting. Everybody is helping us. The tragedy has made headlines the world over. Yesterday we get over a, a 300 telephone calls from all over Canada and England, Europe and uh, from Sri Lanka. The monks at the Buddhist temple where Danushka and his family prayed are ready to take him in when he's discharged from hospital and care for him. It may take uh, time for him to, uh, you know, uh, forget, I, and I cannot say forget, but uh, feel some freedom from this suffering. Those at this vigil struggled to come to terms with the senseless violence. We're just a few houses down from, from where, where it happened and um, it's been weighing heavy on a lot of us and I, it's tough to be able to find an outlet. To, it's nice to see everyone together and to be able to have this space to grieve. I know it's going to take a long time and I feel, feel, I really feel for the family and all the friends involved. What the kids went through to me is the hardest thing, to be honest. And I have uh, young kids as well. Meanwhile, the family says some autopsies are now complete, and that means there may be some funerals early next week. Community members that gathered here today gave each other comfort and consolation, but everyone is haunted by the same question, why? How could this have happened? What could the motive possibly have been? And those are the questions that are driving the ongoing police investigation. Answers, maybe, next week. David Aiken, Global News, Ottawa. The body of former Prime Minister Brian Mulroney has arrived in Canada ahead of his state funeral. Mulroney's family members were on the tarmac at Ottawa's airport Friday as the casket arrived. The 84-year-old passed away in a Florida hospital last Thursday. His funeral will be held in Montreal on March 23rd. 
On the eve of Ramadan, there are fears of a full-scale Israeli ground offensive in Rafah, where more than a million people have sought shelter. And getting aid to those civilians by land or sea is a top priority. The United Nations says a quarter of Gaza's population is on the brink of famine. And Gaza's Hamas-run health ministry says at least 25 children have now died from malnutrition and dehydration. This Spanish ship carrying aid is expected to head to Gaza from Cyprus this weekend. The European Union's maritime mission is in addition to U.S. airdrops, which the United Nations says do little to alleviate the suffering. And today, Sweden joined Canada, revealing it will resume payments to UNRWA, despite an investigation into allegations its staff were involved in the October 7th attacks. Redmond Shannon reports. More aid drops into Gaza and more footage of some of the parachutes apparently failing. Reports on Friday said five Gazans died when some crates plunged to the ground. Not only can the drops be dangerous, the United Nations says the volume will do little to help the more than half a million people it says are on the brink of famine. The UN Special Rapporteur on the Right to Food says the videos of airdrops only serve domestic political purposes in the US. With Israel still blocking most aid trucks from crossing via land, sea is now the last option. This Spanish tugboat will leave port in Cyprus this weekend, towing 200 tonnes of supplies. Although it's not clear how it will dock, a US plan to build a temporary port could take two months to complete. On Saturday, Sweden joined Canada in restoring funding to the UN's relief agency in Gaza. UNRWA faces an ongoing investigation into allegations some staff were involved in the October 7th Hamas attacks. The decision is in recognition of the serious and significant processes that the United Nations has undertaken to address the issues in UNRWA. The head of UNRWA says he's optimistic other nations will follow. But Canada's most prominent Jewish organization says it will challenge Ottawa's decision in court, saying no Canadian taxpayer funds should go to organizations with ties to hate, terror, violence and anti-Semitism. El reconocimiento al Estado palestino por... Amid louder calls for a two-state solution, Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez says he wants Spain to become one of the few Western European countries to formally recognize the state of Palestine. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's office says he spoke with Israeli War Cabinet member Benny Gantz on Friday. Trudeau told Gantz Canada wants more aid to reach people in Gaza and he again raised concerns about the humanitarian implications of Israel's planned offensive on the city of Rafah. Nitu? Redmond Shannon in London tonight. Thanks, Redmond. U.S., French and British forces downed at least 28 drones in the Red Sea region overnight and again today after Yemen's Iran-backed Houthis targeted a bulk carrier and U.S. destroyers. Houthi rebels have been attacking ships in the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden since November in solidarity with Gaza. There is no reprieve to Russia's assault in Ukraine. Overnight, a Russian strike hit a row of residential buildings in the southern city of Kherson, injuring at least one child. Russia is advancing further west after seizing Avdiivka last month and is ramping up artillery attacks as it gains momentum on the battlefield, with Kyiv running low on ammunition and heavy equipment. Ukraine's allies in the West are delicately raising the prospect of sending troops into Ukraine. Poland's foreign minister said Friday the presence of NATO troops in Ukraine is, quote, not unthinkable. Last month, French President Emmanuel Macron said the possibility of Western troops being sent to Ukraine could not be ruled out. Russia has warned if NATO sends combat troops in, a direct conflict between the alliance and Russia would be inevitable. Sweden finally has what it wants, a NATO membership, which bolsters the alliance's northern flank. In the eastern flank, in Latvia, Canada has its largest NATO mission, Operation Reassurance. The feds want to boost Canada's military presence there with more troops. But as Mercedes Stevenson tells us, the armed forces is having a tough time recruiting new members. Mercedes? Nithu, Defense Minister Bill Blair surprised a room full of military brass and allies in Ottawa this week when I sat down with him to talk about the state of the Canadian Armed Forces at a major defense conference. 
What Minister Blair had to say about the state of the Canadian Armed Forces is the furthest I've ever heard a sitting defence minister go in admitting just how dire the situation is for our troops. Speaking to the crisis in recruiting and retention, Blair didn't mince his words. If, if what you are, have been doing for decades is no longer working for you, you can't just keep doing it. And over the past three years, more people have left than have, have entered. That is, is frankly, it's, 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 it's a death spiral for the Canadian Armed Forces. This week on the West Block, we sit down with former Chief of the Defence Staff, retired General Tom Lawson, to talk about Minister Blair's comments, the shortage of troops, and the news that almost half of the Canadian military's equipment has been deemed unavailable and unserviceable. Lawson has one creative idea to at least try to attract and keep more people. Nobody says the Canadian Armed Forces are overpaid. Um, so I, I think that there's an opening there to make the Armed Forces not only okay paid, but remarkably well paid with remarkable benefits so that you can compete with any organization. One of the people in the room to hear Minister Blair's comments was Latvia's defense minister. He's of course come to Canada from a country which is directly exposed to Russian aggression every day. Latvia's Defence Minister Spruits had some thoughts on Canada not meeting its 2% in terms of NATO spending targets. 2% is important. It's important in a wider NATO context. It's important because it shows that there is solidarity and threat assessment and understanding that there are common things what we should do together actively and of course sh uh, fair uh, burden sharing is very important. It is also about credibility. We'll find out just how much the government may ramp up military spending in the anticipated federal budget, which is coming in April. Nithu? Mercedes Stevenson in Ottawa. Thanks, Mercedes. Police in northwestern Nigeria say armed men have broken into another school and abducted 15 children. It comes just 48 hours after nearly 300 students were seized in another mass abduction. 28 of those students have reportedly managed to escape. Nigeria's security forces are stretched thin fighting an Islamist insurgency in the region. Mass fish kill coming up, investigating the mystery behind hundreds turning up dead in a section of the St. Lawrence River. Parts of eastern Newfoundland, including St. John's, are covered in snow after roughly 50 centimetres fell in two days. Another 20 centimetres is expected by morning, coupled with wind gusts up to 70 kilometres an hour. The storm is the second to bury eastern parts of the province in less than a month. And there's more messy weather expected Monday. In Quebec, there has been a mass fish kill in a section of the St. Lawrence River near Montreal. Water levels there have suddenly dropped to the lowest levels in decades. Tonight, Dan Spector looks at what else could have caused the deaths. A few weeks ago, Gina Fili was walking the shores of the St. Lawrence looking for trash to pick up when she had a terrible realization. She was stepping on hundreds of dead fish. It's not normal that there are so many dead animals on the shore. The director of a local environmental organization, she started documenting the damage immediately. So many carcasses that you get a feeling that you're not really feeling good. After some steady rain, the water is higher now, but she says that day it was so low she could have walked the, all the way to the island the she's pointing to. Is, there was no water at all here. So that's completely abnormal. Dr. Dr. Philippe Blais says that, many like fish got caught out of the water. Yeah. Waste and a lack of oxygen could have also contributed to their deaths. Some got stuck in small pools like this. A few weeks back when it was like minus 10, well, all this froze over. Uh, so any fish that might have like made it in these, pool, in these little pools will probably just died right there. Other creatures like crustaceans, mussels, insects, and this small turtle were left totally exposed. Massacre every year, you know, like, it's, it's just not normal. According to Blair, die-offs here are an annual occurrence. The scientist says the St. Lawrence Seaway Authority lowers the water at the Cote St. Catherine Lock during the winter months, but accused them of lowering it even more this year. We'd like to know exactly what the reason is. The Seaway Authority says it controls water levels during the winter period of non-navigation for infrastructure maintenance purposes. It says reduced ice cover and water evaporation related to warmer weather conditions combined with the other factors related to climate change would have all contributed to the observed situation. 
Fisheries and Oceans Canada told Global News in a statement it received a report about the low waters and dead fish on March 1st and will be in contact with St. Lawrence Seaway Management Corporation for further information. Without an inquiry, we can't really be sure of what happened. The environmentalists hope Fisheries and Oceans Canada conducts a meaningful investigation into the problem so it can be prevented in the future. Dan Spector, Global News, Brossard, Quebec. The federal government is slashing its national beer tax just weeks ahead of its planned increase. Our government will be extending this 2% cap on the excise duty for an additional two years. The alcohol excise tax, which also includes duties on spirits and wines, was set to go up by 4.7% on April 1st. Similar to last year, it will now be capped at 2%. Freeland also announced changes to the excise tax for beer brewed in Canada, cutting that in half for the next two years. Ahead, the satellite launch marking a new era in methane accountability, aiming to combat the climate crisis. When it comes to global warming, methane traps about 30 times more heat in the atmosphere than the same volume of carbon dioxide. World leaders pledged earlier this year to reduce methane emissions, but how do you hold them accountable? As Mike Trollet reports, a new satellite will be capable of spotting methane leaks in real time, and the data will be available to anybody with a computer. Invisible to the naked eye, yet devastating as an agent of global warming. Methane makes up one-third of the gases heating the planet. And the lift off, Falcon 9. Earlier this so week, U.S.-based NGO Denver. Environmental Defense provided a huge piece to the methane puzzle with the launch of a new satellite with the ability to accurately pinpoint the source of emissions. The network of satellites currently being used aren't very accurate, and the data they do collect takes too long to process. But what really makes methane sat a game changer is that anybody will be able to access the data on Google Earth. Um, we are entering a new era of transparency and it's really going to help us, um, you know, as NGOs uh, working with governments to un inform uh, policy and, and reduce those emissions. We're now aiming for at least 75% reduction. Canada was aggressive in its methane reducing promises at the most recent UN climate change conference, pledging to reduce emissions 75% by 2030, above the 30% goal set for most countries. Methane emissions largely come from leaks or gas flares as oil is pulled from the earth. I've been to 15, 20 countries uh, over the last two to three years working on oil and gas methane emissions. And the stuff that I see in the US, the stuff that I see in Europe, it's all the same. It's all the same problems. It's easy to fix. I mean, we're talking about um, you know plumbing problems for the most part. The current data shows methane flares emanating from Alberta's oil and gas industry, but those pale in comparison to hotspots in other parts of the world. The major players when it comes to leaks are China, Russia and the US, and it's not even close. The question is, if major players in countries with fewer regulations will act on the information methane sat provides. It is going to be uneven. We are going to see methane emissions continuing to increase, probably in some jurisdictions. But by being able to demonstrate in Canada that we can reduce emissions, that would that will make it easier to do it elsewhere as well. We can show the, what are the practices, what are the technologies to reduce methane emissions. When it goes online in 2025, methane sat won't plug any leaks, but it will hold companies and countries accountable. Microlight Global News, Toronto. Next, from Montreal to Hollywood's red carpet, the emotional journey of a Canadian short film nominated for an Oscar. Canadian director Celine Song's debut film, Past Lives, a decade-spanning romance hailed as one of 2023's best movies. It's nominated for Best Picture and Best Original Screenplay at tomorrow's Academy Awards. Song is far from the only Canadian filmmaker getting nods at Hollywood's biggest night. Among them is Toronto's Nisha Pahuja for her film, To Kill a Tiger, nominated for Best Documentary Feature. While The Last Repair Shop, co-directed by Halifax, Ben Proudfoot is up for best documentary short. 
Among them is also Vincent René Lorty, whose film Invincible is nominated for Best Live Action Short. And as Mike Armstrong explains, the Montreal director's film is a very personal story that he felt compelled to share with the world. Vincent René Lorty, live action short film Invincible. There hasn't been much sleep of late for Vincent René Lorty. The Quebec director's first big event in L.A. was the Oscar nominee luncheon that included a surreal selfie snapped by Steven Spielberg. I'm not going to lie, it's been a lot of surprise. Like this whole Oscar thing has been not expected for us. Like we never expected to be here. Happy. Invincible is a haunting, true, and personal story. It's the last 48 hours in the life of a teenage boy in youth detention. The main character is based on René Lortzi's best friend growing up, who died by suicide. The problem wasn't his family, it wasn't the people that worked at ju the juvenile center. It's really more the story of, of someone who feels like he's in a world that cannot accept him. Making the movie took six years, but it came with a sort of healing. René Lortzi dealt with grief and not only his own. The film was shot in the same detention center where his friend had been held and where some of the staff still works. You know, this story was important to them. They lost someone and there was a lot of grieving for them as well. It was really difficult. Now, there were serious struggles making the movie and releasing it. Enough that René Lortzi says he came close to giving up filmmaking. Now, well, instead, it nominee. caught fire Best to the point where his team short. sat down as the Oscar nominations were announced and didn't have to wait long. <laughs> now, there are heavyweights in the category, some major studios and big directors. René Lortzi says he doesn't expect to win, but that he will let himself carry some hope down the red carpet. Thinking that a little Canadian film is going to, um, you know, change everything is a bit hard to believe, but yeah, we'll see. Mike Armstrong, Global News, Montreal. And that is Global National for this Saturday night. I'm Neetu Garcha. Tonight's Your Canada is this CN train passing through Rothsay, New Brunswick. A reminder, daylight savings begins for most of the country early tomorrow, so don't forget to move your clocks forward by an hour. Thanks so much for watching and have a great night.